good morning madam good morning friends and uh, today i am going to take a seminar on antidepressant drugs okay so what do you mean by antidepressant drugs so antidepressant drugs or nothing else but these are the medical medications okay and these medications and which was mostly used for the so the person who are under depression so they are going to give this kind of medicine okay so that medication is called as a antidepressant drugs so there are some of the other conditions they are going to use this type of antidepressant drugs are the subsessive compulsive disorder generalized anxiety disorder and post traumatic stress disorder okay so these are other uh, conditions that they are going to use this kind of a uh, antidepressants so what uh, what this antidepressant drugs are going to do means and uh, so when the person who is in a depression or maybe in a chronic pain and uh, it is going to be improves the mood and emotional levels of the individual okay and uh, the neurotransmitters so that will help to so send the signals and uh, by the nerves and it is going to be relieve some pain okay whatever the person is having a pain and that is going to be relieved and uh, by the drugs of antidepressants okay and it is mainly and helpful for the emotional the person who is having an emotional distress so that's just the introduction regarding of antidepressants so what do you mean by antidepressant medications okay so these antidepressant medications or the uh, chemicals okay so or it is also called as a neurotransmitters so what is go these medications are going to do means and uh, these chemicals in the brain so that will whatever the person is having effect or the mood or emotions so that these transmitters is going to be changes okay and the person who is in a pain or the depression and uh, it is going to be helpful to relieve that pain and depression okay so that medication is called as a anti depressants okay and uh, these anti depressants is going to be so control the balance of the chemicals in the brain so either non epinephrine epinephrine so these kind of the receptors neurotransmitters so it is going to be fluctuated so these anti not only this anti depressants will be cure the depression also some of the other factors also is going to be so influenced to get the depression also so that so whenever you are going to concentrate on the medications and you are also has to be concentrate with the combination of the biological and or psychological factors or the social factors or his lifestyle and his relationship with the other members and the coping skills also is very very important along with these type of a antidepressant medications okay so next go for the classification of antidepressants okay so in that the first classification is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors okay so in that the sub uh, classifications of the uh, sertraloprom okay so it will helpful to so manage a depressive illness and the panic disorder and next one is a acetaloprom okay so it is also used for manage depressive illness and generalized anxiety disorder obsessive compulsive disorder panic disorder and the social anxiety disorders and next one is a paroxetine so same so this is also will be helpful for relieve the depression social anxiety disorder post traumatic stress disorders and obsessive compulsive disorder and panic disorder and next drug is fluoxetine so it is also same use for uh, has we have seen other drugs and uh, extra one that it is going to be deal is a bulimia nervosa and next one is a fluoxamine so it is also helpful for the man as a depressive and obsessive compulsive disorder only and next one sertraline so whenever this sertraline is used for four okay depressive illness obsessive compulsive disorder panic disorder and the social anxiety disorder and the post traumatic stress disorder okay so uh in some cases and the sertraline so is failure to respond so in that so we have to so increase the dose of the sertraline so then it is very effective so whenever you are going to give this type of sertraline medication and next one is a uh metrazepine okay so this metrazepine so it's a second line choices for this uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor that is lopramide moclobramide and uh, reboxetine so these are the second line drugs 
so other than the first line that is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors okay and second classification is a selective serotonin and non-epinephrine reuptake inhibitor okay so whenever you are taking this type of a selective serotonin and non-epinephrine reuptake inhibitor so you should be uh, conscious that uh, consider that so whenever you are using of an monoamine oxidase inhibitor so you have to give a gap within 14 days of time at least seven days should be allowed so between stopping their use and administration of the monoamine oxidase inhibitor so because it is a side effect for the whenever you are giving alternative to this drug and uh, what other drug is a uh, desvanafaxin okay so these uh, uh, Desven vaccine so it is a uh, in order to relieve the major depressive disorder and next one is a uh, duloxetine okay so it is used to same depressive disorder general anxiety and the diabetic neuropathy okay so the person who is having enuresis okay so enuresis means urinary incontinence so for that cases you can give this so duloxetine okay and next one is a uh, Okay, venafaxin okay so this venafaxin so it is used for the depression generalized anxiety disorder and the social anxiety disorder but one contraindication for this drug is that and you will have the cardiac arthemias and uncontrolled hypertension also you can see in with this so venafaxin okay and next one is a um Melaciprin, okay, so it is used to treat the chronic pain, okay, and also used to treat the depression also. And next one is a levo melaciprin, okay, so it is used to treat the depressive disorders, okay. So these are the classification of the selective serotonin and non epinephrine inhibitors. And third classification is a tricyclic antidepressant and a related antidepressant, okay. So and uh, it is also having both. Uh, uh, actions of the uh, ser serotonin and as a non-adrenaline so the whatever the same effect of the structure is there and this tricyclic antidepressants is also having the same thing so it is going to be block the reuptake of both serotonin and non-adrenaline so that for example you see that and before in the second classification I explained in the ser uh, serotonin so before giving when you whenever you want to give a tricyclic antidepressants you have to give a time period why because so these uh, tricyclic antidepressants will block the uh, serotonin and non-adrenaline so you have to avoid taking of these drugs okay and the drugs which will give for this uh, tricyclic antidepressants are amitriptyline okay so it is used for the migraine and neuropathic pain abdomen pain or the discomfort we are going to give these type of drugs okay and uh, if patient who are not responded to laxity or low prama ida so they can use this kind of process okay next one is a uh, doxepin okay so it is also used for the depressive illness so but the contraindication for these uh, doxepin means dizziness and drowsiness or the side effects and agitation anxiety confusion irritability and the paresthesia and the sleep disturbance is going to be there for this doxepin and next one is a uh, lofipramine okay so it is also used with the depressive illness only but common side effects like dizziness agitation anxiety confusion irritability and uh, paresthesia means numbness will be there and the postural hypertension okay so either you may be seeing that uh, by standing or sitting position or sleeping position you will be having a hypertension or sleep disturbance will be there and next one is a uh, dosolipin hydrochloride so it is also used for the depressive illness and uh, the other side effects and the same like as i have discussed previously okay and next and uh, next one is a uh, so disipramine hydrochloride in that classification only so it is also drug and uh, it is used to the to treat the symptoms of depressions and uh, this uh, disipramine is going to be useful and uh, this disipramine may cause uh, psychosis in schizophrenic patient so for uh, schizophrenic patient we have to avoid these kind of drugs and next one imipramine so imipramine means so it is used for depressive illness as well as uh, aneurysis nocturnal aneurysis means urinary incontinence we can see and side effect is a uh, fatigue and uh, flushing sweatings headache will be there palpitations and restlessness will be there okay and next one is a nortriptyline okay so it is for uh, illness and uh, depressive illness and uh, neuropathic pain and uh, in manic phases and you have to stop these kind of drug 
okay and the common side effects like fatigue hypertension and uh, mydrasis means uh, you will be having of an eye defects and restlessness will be there okay and next one is uh, amoxipine so amoxipine is used to treat depression anxiety or agitation but so these drug uh, should be avoided so do not use this medication within 14 days of taking an monoamine oxidase antidepressants okay so this should be avoided so the, whenever you are giving a monoamine oxidase inhibitor drugs yes and uh, these two drugs we should not use at a, to, at a time okay next one is a clomipramine so it is also used for the depressive illness and uh, the extra is a phobia they are going to use this and cataplexy and uh, who who will have the movement disorders okay and narcolepsy means sleep disorders okay so that you have to give this kind of process and next one is a maprotenine okay so it is used for the depressive neurosis and uh, manic depression illness and it is going to be used and uh, but whenever you are taking this uh, maprotenine drug and you have to avoid the alcohol okay and next one is a timipramine okay so timipramine and it is also used for depressive illness and uh, so it is mainly uh, you have to have a side effects like agitation and a lack of appetite anorexia anxiety arthemias blurred vision confusion constipation dizziness and dry mouth so, okay and uh, this is a drug side effects okay and next one is a uh, and a uh, protriptyline okay and the uh, same thing so it's used for treat the symptoms of depression okay and uh, but whenever you are using a monoamine oxidase inhibitors uh, that drug automatically you should not give this drug okay so medicine within seven, uh, 14 days of taking you should avoid this drug okay side effects like nausea vomiting loss of appetite and insomnia dry mouth and urinating and the constipation will be there with this drug and the fourth classification of this uh, antidepressants are the monoamine oxidase inhibitor okay and uh, what this monoamine oxidase inhibitor will do means and these enzymes that will break down the non epinephrine serotonin and the dopamine in the brain okay and some of the other parts of the brain receptors also it is going to be so breakdowns and where um, the tricyclic antidepressants and whereas and uh, frequently it is going to be used much less whenever you are going giving this monoamine oxidase inhibitors and uh, because of the danger of dietary and some drug, drug interactions is going to be there with this monoamine oxidase inhibitor and uh, it's been fit for the phobias and uh, depression patient and uh, hypochondriacal okay and uh, frequent doubt about the physical symptoms and hysterical features uh, or but so these are the prescribed drugs we can give this monoamine oxidase inhibitors and some side effects you can give the postural hypotension weight gain and the sexual side effects means sexual exhibitions so these kind of disorders you are going to see in this monoamine oxidase inhibitors so the, the example of the drugs are isocarbomazine phenylazine and uh, and uh, Trincycropromine. So these are the drugs, and uh, some of the other drugs are the risangeline and the selangeline. Okay, so it's also used uh, so to treat the depression. Depression. Okay, and some of the monotherapy means Parkinsonism diseases if the person is having, and uh, co benaldopa and the co caral dopa. Okay, so it is used for and end of dose fluctuations, and you can use this kind of drugs. And next one, last one is a atypical antidepressants. And these drugs is a bupropion. Okay, so and uh, used to aid smoking cessation in combination. Okay, so what they are giving that. And uh, so this drug is mostly useful for the smoking session. To stop the smoking, then they are going to give this type of thing. And uh, the drug should not be used in patients with uh, seizures and eating disorders. And uh, if you are using monoamine oxidase inhibitors, and uh, within two weeks, you have to avoid this drug okay and generally and uh, it does not cause any weight gain or sexual problem side effects will not be there with this drug and next one is a meritazepine and it is going to be act as a alpha adreno receptor and serotonin and 5h2 receptor antagonist it will act so okay why because it will increase the non-adrenaline and the serotonin neurotransmission so it will easily it can manage the depression and next one is a nif 
nifazodon okay and it is it is going to be inhibit the serotonin and non epinephrine so by that also we can able to uh, manage the depression or we can uh, include with the major depression also we can use this process and if the person who are having a liver disorders we should not use this uh, nif nifazodon okay and next one is a uh, trazodon okay and it is also same okay so principal serotonin ph2 receptor antagonist and it is will be helpful to manage a depressive illness so it will helpful to sedate okay and next one is a uh, velazodone okay it is also having the antagonist receptors of both okay serotonin and as well as a um, antagonist okay serotonin non epinephrine antagonist and it is used to uh, manage your major depressive disorders okay next one is a vrotio uh, vrotioxetine okay it is also used to manage the major depressive disorders and next one okay so these are the classification of the drugs of various classification okay first one is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and uh, second one is a and uh, second one we can and uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and second one is selective serotonin and non epinephrine reuptake inhibitors and third one is tricyclic antidepressants and uh, fourth one is monoamine oxidase inhibitors and the uh, fifth one is atypical antidepressants okay so these are the classification of antidepressants and next we see that risk factors okay so the people over 65 age group and they are going to consider it as a risk factor for taking of a antidepressants and pregnant women and a teen and youngs okay so it is going to be have the increased suicidal thoughts for the young women okay young teenagers okay and people who may have the bipolar disorders okay and uh, these uh, bipolar disorder will be effective so it will uh, affect in the manic disorders maybe so excessive uh, hyperactiveness will be the depression will be there so that is also very dangerous and to give this in the process of bipolar disorders and uh, for which cases and these will give antidepressants means depression and childhood psychiatric disorders we are going to give that is depression episode and uh, dysthymia reactive depression secondary depression abnormal grief reactions and childhood psychiatric disorder like enuresis in continuation of urine and separation anxiety disorder and uh, somnambulism and excessive sleep and uh, school phobia and the night terrors so these are the indication they are going to give for the depression and uh, some of the other psychiatric disorders like panic attack and some anxieties agoraphobia fear of places and social phobia is going to be there and uh, obsessive compulsive disorder eating disorders and personality disorder post traumatic stress disorders and uh, depersonalization syndrome means and they are not aware of their self okay so in that cases we are going to give uh, antidepressants and some of the medical chronic pain migraine and the peptic ulcers they are going to give this antidepressant drugs and administration so these uh, antidepressants and we can give as oral tablet and iv we can give and some topical creams we can give and uh, some patches transdermal patches we can give like uh, inhalation for example and uh, some studies also examined uh, to give a uh, roots via inhalation intranasal sublingual and the rectal form and uh, if these uh, roots they are not extended alternatives also they can use as a antidepressant therapy and what is a pharmacokinetic they are going to use means and this pharmacokinetic property means for selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor and 15 to 26 hours and it will take a half life and whereas and floxetines okay and for this 4 to 6 days it will take and uh, nor floxetine 4 to 16 days and resulting in external time to state state means it may increase the timing so other than that and uh, these uh, timings it will take overall half life 15 to 26 hours it will take okay and uh, next one mechanism of action so what it will be doing means uh, so this mechanism it will block the reuptake of both non epinephrine and serotonin that's tricyclic antidepressant and whereas in serotonin and uh, non epinephrine and uh, it will helpful to uh, block the so muscarine nothing else but the neurotransmitters and the alpha adrenergic and histaminic receptors and uh, it will help helpful to uh, depress these molecules and the cells to control the depression levels okay so that is a functioning of the mechanism of action of uh, antidepressants and it is also helpful for the sedative effect okay 
and uh, next one is the side effects okay so what are the side effects for these means autonomic side effects like a dry mouth constipation and cyclopegia okay so maybe uh, the eye problems okay so my dry cysts okay involuntary eye movements and urinary incontinence orthostatic hypotension means so the person in standing position and they will get the process and impotence okay so the male person will not have the sexual depression impaired ejaculation delirium aggravation of glaucoma and next one central nervous side effects like sedation tremors and extra pyramidal syndromes okay like a dyskinesis is one of the example and withdrawal syndrome seizures and uh, jitterness syndrome the momental syndrome and uh, perspiration of the mania will sweating okay and cardiac side effects also will be there and allergic side effects and uh, metabolic and endocrinal side effects and special effects of monoamine oxidase drug like hypertension crisis and uh, severe hepatic necrosis will be there hyperpyrexia okay so this is especially for monoamine oxidase drug okay and some of the other side effects common like nausea insomnia anxiety restlessness dizziness and uh, decrease sex drive weight gain and tremors will be there okay and uh, if you are withdrawing the means if you are stopping sudden stopping of antidepressants are there and you are going to use this with withdrawal symptoms okay if you are avoiding to take of antidepressant drug for example and continuously you are taking and you are stopping this drug and what are the drug and uh, symptoms you are getting means anxiety agitation depression and mood will swing and flu like symptoms like cold cough okay so this all thing and irritability and aggression and lack of sleep and uh, nightmares okay night fears you will get night times and uh, extreme restlessness fatigue nausea and vomiting and dizziness loss of coordination and uh, you will have the stomach pains electrical shocks sensations will be there and tremors and muscle spasms you are going to take okay and next one is interaction with other medicines so if along with these antidepressants you are taking of other drugs like for example ibu okay ibuprofen okay so if you are taking these drug so it is interacting with the other medication and so showing some of the adverse effect and uh, during pregnancy period and uh, during breastfeeding and the children sending people alcohol and illegal drugs okay so and you should not be um, take this kind of antidepressant along with this antidepressants okay it will interact with the other medicine and next one adverse effect nothing else but already we have discussed excessive mood elevation suicidal thoughts you will see and some withdrawal symptoms already we discussed and that you are going to see okay and next we'll go for the assessment of nursing assessment so we'll see so what you have to assess when you are uh, taking of the antidepressant drug so first you have to take opt in health history like allergies family history of mood disorders and the possible drug interactions so this you have to concentrate okay and uh, next one is uh, so you have to assess the mood disorders and which type of mood disorder whether depressive mania so that you have to make a tool and uh, in which intervals and these depressions are getting everything you have to take a examination and next frequency of assessment will relate to severity of the mood disorders okay i means the timing at what time it is elevating and at what time it is decreasing and uh, next obtain history of any cardiac problems renal problems liver problems okay gallbladder problems and any mental disorders okay so that everything you have to so do some of the investigations like ecg blood studies you have to undergo like cbc platelet glucose blood urea nitrogen and creatine and electrolytes liver function test enzymes and urine urine analysis everything you have to undergo the history of process and next one is a neurological status you have to find out why because if the person is having any seizures or uh, identification of the mood or the behavioral pattern you have to go for the neurological examination okay so that assessment you have to do and uh, some of the diagnosis they have given like coping ineffectively and powerlessness and the thought process disturbed related to side effects of the drug and knowledge deficit related to drug therapy and violence or self directed uh, risk for others and urinary retention you have to take related to anticholinergic side effects of drug and non compliance related to decrease sexual libido or weight gain and risk for injury related to adverse side effects and self care deficit related to fatigue and nutritional imbalance less than the body requirement related to anoxia anorexia and nutritional imbalance more than the body requirement related to side effect of the medication or eating 
discomfort okay so these are the nursing diagnosis and we'll see some of the interventions of the uh, client instructions what you are going to give for this nursing diagnosis okay and first the first uh, the planning of the client goals is that report first mood elevations you have to check and uh, we have to give a safe from uh, self harm and half directed towards others and we have to self care activities you have to activate and uh, sound free environment you have to give and you know to fall asleep and you have to demonstrate an understanding of drug action to the person okay and the next what is the implementation you have to make means first whatever the vital signs everything blood pressure pulse and everything you have to make because in order to avoid some of the like for example even prevent drug we have given so that is a side effect like orthostatic hypotension right so that you should be implemented and we have to administer the drug accurately and what are the doses given and whenever you are taking of a signs and symptoms okay so that signs and symptoms also you have to take into consideration okay and some of the serotonin syndromes okay like for example like uh, withdrawal syndromes you have to take care and uh, monitor the vomiting or chest pain you have to take out and cardiovascular status also you have to monitor some neurologic neurological status you have to monitor okay so what are the instructions of the client we are giving for different uh, kind is mm, the patient uh, conscious level you have to check okay and the position avoid abrupt changes in the position you have to check out and monitor the vital signs already we discussed and the blood pressure readings is very very important whenever you are giving okay and instruct client to take medication at the bedtime okay to decrease the daytime drowsiness and the night time is very important okay and uh, two to uh, four weeks of mood to improve so whenever you are taking of these drugs okay and uh, you see that report any feelings of suicidal is there you have to inform to the client that you have to take so if it is overdose and uh, it is life threatening for the patient okay so that you have to inform immediate information is needed and some of the side effects also you have to uh, take care of the instruct the client like dizziness headache tremors and you have to so say to the patient and the next one is a and and if if neurological status of the client is a uh, improper so immediate continuation of monitoring of mental and emotional status also should be continued by the process and suicidal ideation also you have to take out and if the person is having a schizophrenia the psychosis bipolar disorder and you have to monitor whenever you are taking these kind of antidepressant drugs and whenever you are giving off an anticholinergic drug and you have to observe for any type of cardiovascular disorders and you have to monitor the sleep cycle and if the patient is having any type of proper daytime or sleeping is there and insomnia or the daytime somnolence is there daytime sleeping is there so that also you have to check and the next one is a urinary output also you have to check for the client okay and uh, any gastrointestinal status also you have to check and uh, liver function and uh, blood function also you have to check out and uh, some of the other like immediate uh, okay suicidal impulses okay diphoria means suicidal impulses and no self harm that you have to take care and uh, 10 to 14 days before improvement so you have to one month of full therapeutic effect you have to give to the client okay and uh, if any instruct the client uh, regarding bowel bladder routine process and the taking of drug early in the morning if insomnia occurs to promote normal time of sleep you have to effect okay so morning times you have to avoid uh, taking of these drugs and avoid driving whenever you are taking this kind of drug only bed time you have to take this one okay and you have to follow the sleep hygiene also and uh, fluid intake okay fluid intake and output is very very important okay so notify that if the person is having a urinary problems like a edema dysuria so that you have to consider it okay and uh, that will make if any fever is there that may consider to the urinary tract infections okay and the elderly may have more prone to get some of the side effects regarding these anti depressants and the children's on imipramin like for example urinary incontinence is very common okay and uh, exercises and drink adequate amount of fluids and dietary fiber to promote the stool passages are very very important because side effects is a constipation right and uh, we have to so consult the nurse regarding of laxative or uh, stool softeners are very very important and if the person is uh, if the patient is having nausea and uh, ask the nurse to inform regarding of nausea vomiting diarrhea and some other okay and the nurse also should be considered with a laboratory test okay and um, 
ओके एंड दट आर द नर्सिंग इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द क्लाइंट वेन एवर दे आर टेकिंग ऑफ द एंटी डिप्रेजेंट ड्रग्स सो वाट आर द नर्सस् रेस्पासीबिलिटी ओके बिफोर अडमिस्ट्रेशन एंड आफ्टर अडमिस्ट्रेशन सो बिफोर अडमिस्ट्रेशन सो यू हेव टू चेक फॉर द ड्रग और हेरबल इंटरक्शन यू हेव टू चेक ओके सो वेदर दिस ड्रग इज इंटरक्शन विथ अदर ड्रग फॉर एक्सापल लाइक सो यू ब्रूफिन एंड चेक फॉर एनी अलर्जी एंड मेटल स्टेटस एक्सामेशन यू हेव टू चेक एंड सम सूसइडल टेन्डेंसिस आलो यू हेव टू चेक फॉर द क्लाइंट and after administration means and uh, you have to monitor for the effectiveness as exhibition decrease in symptoms you have to monitor and side effects of the serotonin syndrome you have to identify okay and uh, whenever you are taking drugs and dizziness is the first few weeks of the taking of safety precautions okay so that you have to take in a nursing responsibility for example instructions of client are there so that you have to take and after administration so these are the nursing responsibilities of the client and what is the teaching you have to give means and ensure that patient take the medication as prescribed you have to make sure and some symptoms also you have to helpful and teach the client that following up of visit is very very important and whereas and the drug may take 3 to 4 weeks longer should be effective means to control that signs and symptoms 3 to 4 weeks it will take okay and in form uh, in form of drugs and help that can interact okay so means so along with this drug what are the interaction drugs are there that we should not take so that you have to teach as a nurse okay so that we have discussed and coming to the summary today we have discussed regarding of antidepressant medications and some other relief symptoms of depression and classification and mechanism of action side effects and nursing role and uh, the nurse will enhance the knowledge on antidepressants will helpful to treat the client okay and when our conclusion regarding of this means so this depression is a cap uh, capacitating disease which needs appropriate treatment so by this antidepressant drugs only and the future perspective of treating mood disorders such as depression so it will helpful to uh, stop the cases and it will help the nurse to control the depression patient okay thank you